Hi folks, it's Sonia with 2x2 Legoto. Um, kind of dropped off the face of the planet for a little while. Um, haven't done a few videos recently, but I've got an important one for you today on doodles. Now I want to share my perspective on this and then I'll go into the details of the video. The purpose of this video is not, hear me very clearly, not to bash anyone who owns a doodle, not to bash anyone who has or is breeding doodles. And by doodle I mean the term that is given um, by breeders of such animals um, means a poodle bred to a lab, a poodle bred to a golden retriever, and it has gone on from there. St. Bernard's, um, German Shepherds, all, all manner. They've taken a, two purebred dogs and bred them to each other for a hybrid that they have called a doodle. So I'm not, I want to be very clear. I'm not, the purpose of this video is not to bash or malign any of this. It is simply to educate. I want people to understand what they are doing when they make this purchase decision. When you are purchasing a purebred, especially from a reputable breeder, you have a consistent breed type, you have a consistent health and genetic pattern that has been established over the lifetime of that particular breed. So when I get clients who, or potential clients who tell me that they are considering a doodle, I'm a bit frustrated because um, there's a lot of things I know, there's a lot of misinformation out there, and there's a lot of things I know they aren't being informed of. So whether they get a puppy from me or not is not the issue here. The issue is strictly about education about these hybrids. And so let's get into that discussion. I came about this, the decision to do this video, um, after I had a couple of clients opt for a doodle instead of a purebred dog. And I know that there's going to be issues developed because I get those same calls every week. Hey, I bought such and such doodle and I wasn't given any um, grooming information and so I saw your YouTube video on your lovely Legoto, so I thought I would ask you. Well, I, I don't have any, I don't have any clue about grooming doodles, um, but I know what other groomers who have groomed them on a regular basis are telling me. So the basis for my video, I went to Facebook and I visited a couple of veterinarians and trainers and I went to a grooming convention and I asked all my questions so that I could put this YouTube video together with some semblance of, um, some semblance of knowledge. So let's get into this. On Facebook, I posted this on a professional groomers page, has about 60,000 groomers on this page. I asked, I, I pointed this question at this group. I'm putting together a top 10 list of things people weren't told before they bought their, insert whatever kind, of doodle for a YouTube educational clip. No bashing. This is a reasonable question. I'm not advocating for or against, so please keep your comments nice. And so far I have 39 comments in the groomer section of this question. Um, one person says, you only have to get them groomed every 12 weeks, lol, if you shave them down each time. Also know that your doodle will potentially shed. They aren't hypoallergenic, and grooming is not low maintenance. They are high maintenance as far as grooming. Cost and time and maintenance for grooming is astronomical. 
start getting them groomed young, not when they're eight months or 12 months old and completely matted. Um, let's see, somebody else says, please research about how coat genetics works. Also, in fact, know that grooming needs to start early and often. Uh, let's see, other comments. They need a decent amount of professional grooming starting early. So this is a common theme here that these doodles need to be groomed starting very early and often. Um, owners need to be instructed about at-home grooming tools, line brushing, brushing out before and after baths, routine professional grooming appointments on a set schedule. They need to be instructed about what potential coat types and coat changes will occur since these are not an actual breed with no breed standard. And that means that what's born in a particular doodle litter will not have a succinct across the board standard. So one sibling can be different from another sibling could be different from another sibling. Um, there's no um, across the board um, what's the word I'm looking for? They're, they're not, it's not a regular, you don't see the same thing in a litter. Um, there are, um, they need lots of training and socialization consistency that's the word I'm looking for there's no consistency even within a particular litter um, all right so let's see someone else says um, that they need lots of training and socialization in order to be good grooming candidates another groomer says that they have never met a doodle that doesn't shed um, Again, here is another thing that is across the board. They should be introduced to, to grooming as early as possible. Uh, I've had doodle clients tell me that their one-year-old doodle hasn't been to the groomer yet because the breeder told them not to trim them or cut them for the first year. The groomers are all combative about this. They are saying that is um, an awful um, instruction given to doodle owners by the breeders. All right, um, poodle traits, someone else says, poodle traits are recessive. Poodles have been selectively bred for hundreds of years to have these recessive traits. So even if your dog is 75% poodle, it will most likely have a poodle undercoat making them difficult to brush and they will most likely shed a little or a lot. Um, grooming is a very high maintenance. More grooming required than even for a poodle. That's saying a lot. There's no another person says there's no breed standard with which to groom. So you see a wide variety of grooming options, which is problematic for groomers. Um, and someone else says they do shed. They are actually a mixed breed. Um, they need to be brushed and are not low maintenance. Um, they are expensive to maintain with regular grooming appointments happening at least every four to eight weeks with pricing $70 or up per visit. Uh, let's see. Uh, someone else says, when you mix breeds, any breeds, there's never a guaranteed outcome every single puppy can take on different genes than the siblings that's what another person said earlier even if the parents are both half and half genetics are complicated in purebreds let alone these mixed breeds parents should be health tested um, she goes on to discuss all of the exams that should be required of the parents um, temperament is not guaranteed just like code the temperament can be more one than the other parent it is not an, an even mix genes are not a little of both they're not an even mix they will not get even genetics and be a little of each parent 
they will get one gene, one copy of each gene of everything from each parent. For example, they'll get a copy of the head gene from their mom and a head and a copy of the head gene for their dad, a coat gene from dad and a coat gene from mom. So there's no required balance with genes. Coat type cannot be determined until the puppy is mature and has their full adult coat. That's because you have no breed standard or consistency within the program, of the, the breeding. Um, let's see here. These are high energy dogs. Poodles are high energy as are Goldens. Retrievers, Bernese Mountain Dogs, and so on. Um, those are some. Those are some very key things to understand from a grooming perspective, from a coat perspective. So we'll go over those real quick. There's no breed standard. There's no type consistency. There's no coat uniformity. They have very difficult undercoats because of the recessive nature of the genes and they are not truly hypoallergenic and can shed. So that is some very interesting things from a groomer's perspective. Let's go to the trainer's perspective. I ask the same question. I'm putting together a top 10 list of things for things people were not told before they bought their insert whatever kind of doodle. No bashing, I'm not advocating for or against with this question. So trainers, what do you wish your clients had been told by these mixed breed breeders? And I get a lot of, a lot of the same thing. They are high maintenance. Um, they need to start training very early on. Don't assume that because they've got part poodle or part golden retriever that they will be a mix of both breeds. They can have more genetic material from one parent over another that impacts their temperament and their trainability. That's, that's awesome right there. So again, there's no consistency across the board with what temperament or trainability you're going to get. So these trainers say they should be started in a training program as early as possible. Puppy classes, early socialization. Understand that understand that these dogs are not going to resemble their original parent breeds but will have bad habits from each because of the hybridization. Bad habits can show up, bad temperaments can show up, and bad training traits can all show up. Another person says that they find that the number two dog being surrendered to shelters is now the doodles because people are not being told how demanding these dogs can be and the energy level that they have. If you think about it, a Labrador Retriever, a Golden Retriever, they are very high energy active dogs. Quite honestly, so are Poodles. Standard Poodles, Miniature Poodles, very, very active dogs. So now you've taken some of the most active dogs and bred them to each other hoping that they would get this balance. This is what people are talking about. There's no balance because you've mixed the two of them. It's not like pouring um, red dye into a cup of water and an equal part of blue dye into a cup, the same cup of water and hoping that you'll get purple. It doesn't work that way with genetics because a copy of each parent's genes are given to that potential offspring. And within a litter, this is what they're saying, you'll have some that are non-shedding, some that are shedding, some that are easily trained, some that are not easily trained, some that have good temperaments, some that are high energy, some that are extremely hard-headed and have more difficulty training. Across the board, I'm seeing these doodles require more training and I'm having more difficulty training them. That's from one of the top trainers in the southeast. So 
if if the trainers are having problems and the groomers are having problems, um, I I advocate that you do your research. All right. So the next group of people I asked were veterinarians and vet techs. So let's see what we got from them. I'm putting together a top 10 list of things people weren't told before they bought their, insert whatever kind of doodle, for my YouTube educational clip. Again, I strictly instructed, no bashing, that I wasn't advocating for or against this type of breeding. I was simply asking a question for educational purposes. Across the board, again, veterinarians insisted that their clients are not being informed about the health risks associated with hybridization. Hybridization sometimes works um, in, a, in a beneficial way. You can hybridize by um, breeding one kind of chicken to another kind of chicken for the purposes of developing a stronger shell. But you're selectively choosing that. So this chicken has a really hard shell and that chicken has a really hard shell. So I'm going to breed them together and get even harder shells. It does kind of work that way if you are selectively hybridizing. But here we're not selectively hybridizing. We, and when I say we, the powers that be within this fad, the doodle breeding, um, I think that they are opting for something that they don't really understand. Hybridization can make animals hardy if you are selective about your breeding choices. Um, I think that requires a lot of genetic um, background, genetic experience and education. Otherwise, we're just breeding mixed, we're just coming up with mixed breeds for the purposes of um, puppy sales, is what this veterinarian says. Puppy sales should never be given precedent over the health of the pet. Ultimately, the health of the pet should be should be considered. I'm, dr I'm in the car, so it was hard to read that. Um, they are not hypoallergenic. They can take on recessive traits that haven't been seen in hundreds of years, but because of the hybridization, it now shows up. Let's see. Some another vet tech said um, parents should be health tested for all health tests for both breeds. So if you have golden retrievers um, and you're breeding them to poodles, both of those breeds will have a variety of health testing that is required by AKC, by their breed club. Just a standard ethical um, breeding program will adhere to those proper testing. And it's different for each breed. For instance, in Lagoto, we have junior epilepsy, lysosomal storage disorder, neuraxinal dystrophy, um, HUU, which is the uric acid disorder, um, a cataract gene, um, and there's a couple. And then we also test for um, hip dysplasia and a couple of other things. Every breed has those standard tests that are required to to reputably breed those two dogs to each other. A doodle breeder has got double the work to do. So there could be cardiac exams, there could be um, thyroid testing, there could be um, tests for certain kinds of cancer markers. Um, so all of those have to be done so if, if you make this choice to go ahead and pursue getting a doodle, you need to make sure that the parents of your potential puppy have been tested. And don't just take anybody's word. Like when people call me, don't just take my word. Ask me for the tests. I'm, I'm going to show you my official tests. They should be done through my dog DNA, um, which is the clearinghouse for all of our genetic health testing now, um, optimal selection, wisdom health panel, 
uh, Optogen, those are a couple of companies that feed into the My Dog DNA Health Clearinghouse, if all that makes sense. So let's go back to what the veterinarians are saying. Um, let's see, they're saying that more and more they are seeing these <coughs> doodle mixed breeds with more and more health issues. Um, these are some of their biggest tickets at the end of the day. So one, vet, one veterinarian is saying that they require a lot of money. So if they're saying their biggest ticket, so that means that at the end of the day they're adding up their invoices and the doodles are accounting for most of their health problems and their biggest ticket items in their vet care, vet practice. Uh, I wish all breeders would tell their clients the necessary health information and give them the necessary health testing information on all adults that are being used to breed these dogs. Another veterinarian says that he's been practicing for 30 years and he wishes that the doodles, that the doodle breeders would stop telling them that they have good temperaments, that they are hypoallergenic and that they don't have health issues. He said some of the biggest health issues that he has seen in his career have been in the last 10 to 12 years and are doodles. That's interesting and kind of scary. The miniature doodles are killing me, says one vet tech. Joint problems in the dogs and some end up with massive cardiac and neurological issues. All right, so to recap on our veterinarians, they said that there are cardiac, patella, hip issues, cancer, thyroids, thyroid issues, that the dogs are not hypoallergenic and that they are some of the most expensive to maintain in terms of long-term health care. Um, and I don't think I recapped on the training, but the training, the training folks said that they are high energy, they're very smart, they require lots of training from a very early age, um, and the temperaments are not a mix. All right, so we're seeing across the board a lack of uniformity and we're hearing that they are very high maintenance dogs in terms of health, um, training and grooming. Uh, and again, I just want to make sure that everyone hears me correctly on this. Um, I'm, I'm not advocating one way or the other. I do have an opinion about this, but I'm not sharing that in this video right now. Um, if you want my opinion, you can ask me outside of my YouTube um, format and I will give you my opinion, but I wanted to make sure that people are going into this eyes wide open. Um, I've shared details from, so that we had, let's see, 39 groomers had commented, um, 72 vets and vet techs had commented and 104 trainers had commented on my questions. So it, it is um, a wide variety of people. We went to a grooming convention, uh, myself and a, um, a couple of my employees who helped me with training and grooming around and the farm. Um, we went to a grooming convention a couple of weeks ago and we um, sat in on several grooming demonstrations and uh, what I'm hearing is that grooming these dogs has become the bane of the grooming industry, not because they're impossible to do, but because people are not being properly informed on what is necessary, what is proper care, and what the coat will actually require in terms of maintenance. Um, you have to know how to line comb, you have to know how often to take them to the groomer, which sounds like it's every three to six weeks, depending on the coat of the individual and how you want it styled. Um, some of the backlash that I'm seeing personally as a result of the doodle trend is that a lot of my clients' Legoto end up looking like doodles. You know, they've got the, the fuzzy doodle ears with all the hair. They've got the long doodle tail. Um, they're supposed to have a carrot style tail. Um, 
they're being clipped down the bridge of the nose. Um, so, you know, that's, that's one of, that's my frustration with it. But I wanted to find out what other people were saying, that it wasn't just me. Um, so I will end with this statement. If you are considering a doodle, please, please, please research, 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 research. Do not go and get, do not go and visit a puppy and take that puppy home. Sleep on it. Um, ask questions, ask questions, ask questions. How often is this supposed to be groomed, trained? What health risks am I facing by getting this dog? If they tell you don't groom the dog for a year, there's no health risks, um, or, or they're easy to train, run. Run fast and far away. Run. Um, that, that just has to do more with buying from a reputable breeder than, the, than anything, any premise I have outlined with what the issues are here. So ask questions about the parents. Ask to see all of the health testing. And, and do some of your own research. Don't just rely on the breeder to tell you this because they could be misinformed as well. I personally, well, I'm gonna reserve my comments. I told you I would reserve my comment and I will. So ask questions about the parents. That's gonna be critical. Um, find out how to train a poodle. Find out how to train a Labrador retriever. Find out how to train whatever your two, whatever the parents are of your potential puppy that you're investigating, find out how to train those. Talk to trainers. What are some drawbacks with regards to training? Ask your veterinarian. What are some drawbacks with regard to health risks? What do I need to be prepared for if I'm buying a, a puppy that is a poodle mixed with XYZ? What if I'm buying something that's miniaturized? Um, how, how can I prepare for the health risks that will ensue with that decision? So again, ask questions. Go to AKC's website and look up each um, parent and find out what you should expect to see in terms of health testing. What are the basic required health tests and ask that breeder to see them. Ask how they're going to guarantee the coat. Ask how they're going to guarantee the temperament. Ask how they're going to guarantee the size. Because those are all things that cannot possibly have any uniformity based on what the groomers, the trainers, and the veterinarians and vet techs are telling me. There's no consistency. So if you're okay with that risk, then by all means, consider pursuing a doodle. That's all I have for now. I hope I didn't offend anybody. I hope people um, took this to heart and made sure that they're making the correct purchase for themselves and their family because we don't need any more dogs in shelters. All right, thanks. Check out 2x2 um, Two Two Lagoto on Facebook and be sure to like my YouTube channel and share this wide and far. Thanks.